Hi, welcome to Community Connect. My name is Dennis Threadgill. I have with me here Bob Manetta, um, City Councilman for the City of Grand Haven. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So last time we talked um, to Mike Fritz, we talked about the infrastructure and how important it is in the City of Grand Haven um, to businesses, schools, and parks and recreation. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about infrastructure, but utilities as well, and kind of where we're going with it and where the future is for Grand Haven. Okay. Well, you know, utilities are part of the lifeblood of the city, and without people expect to have properly working utilities, well maintained. Uh, without that, you really can't even function as a city. Mm -hmm. Everybody sees the roads, they see the curbs, the gutters, and everything else. You don't necessarily see the pipes in the ground, but without them, you really can't have um, a lifestyle here. You can't function. You can't do really do much sure. or anything. And all that stuff needs to be maintained. It's all built by man with finite life, and all has to be. It's kept up and replaced and kind of coming to its end. Some, yeah. some of it is, some of it is. It's all different ages, all different qualities, okay. all different techniques of construction. The city is a older industrial city and it's uh, some of this stuff's been in the ground a hundred years. How difficult is it to try to sell people on, on what it's like when they can't see it? Well, I like to think that people are smart enough to understand that mm -hmm. these pipes are in the ground and they are pretty darn important. Uh, just because you can't see them when they're out of sight, they, just, they still have to be maintained. And all you need is to have a series of water breaks or sewer breaks or something which causes you to have either a lack of service at your house or your business or a torn up road, and you get the idea pretty quickly that um, it is really quite important. Sure. Of the work that we do um, on infrastructure maintenance, you see the roads in, in the streets, curbs and gutters, some of the storm sewers and such, but we've got We've had a project list of something like um, $45 million out of us, projects okay. upcoming. In the past several years, we've done several projects. We've sold two bond issues. We've done about 20 to $25 million worth of work oh, in the past 10, 12 years. And that's all been really important. And about uh, just under half of that has been involving the, the basic utilities in the street, the water and the sewer in particular. And so, that stuff is partially supported by our water and sewer fund, which mm -hmm. is paid for by ratepayers, partially by the bonds, in fact, largely by the bonds in the past few uh, projects, and to some degree by grants and other money that we've been able to come up with. So it's still a huge part of the project, and it's going to be part of every road reconstruction, and it also occurs even when there's not a road reconstruction, you still have to get in and sometimes dig up pipes and replace them. Okay. even if not a full road reconstruction. I'm sure they look at that and to find the best, you know, way to do it, which makes the most economical sense. Well, we run the project done. We run cameras through our sewers, and we have a pretty good idea where our water pipes are, mm -hmm. and we have a pretty good history of breaks and of maintenance issues. We spend money on, on maintenance every year, and that comes out of our water and sewer funds as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to raise the money somehow in order to do the bigger projects. Mm -hmm project list, unfortunately, is you to pick stuff off the front end, it keeps on growing on the back end, and so we've gotten some of the most urgent projects behind us. We still have a lot ahead of us to do, and we have to keep up with this stuff, so that for one thing, it doesn't snowball into something that we can't afford to keep up with, as we've seen in some of the, some of the other cities in the state and around the country. And so at some point, you just have to buckle down, and you have to get it done, or at you least have, start on the project. You have to get it done, or it becomes so overwhelming that you can't do it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be in that position. We want to maintain Grand Haven as a place that's practical to live in, that's desirable to live in, that serves very well for everything that we want to do here, and doesn't become so much of a burden that we just simply can't do the job. Sure. And what what are some of the numbers that you guys have talked about, and what's needed to you know start to work on these projects? Well, like I said, there's a roughly $45 million project list out there mm -hmm. that's spread out over the next several years. About, um, I think about 10 or 11 million that is in water utilities, about another 10 in sewer. Okay. That is, uh, some of it is replacement of individual lines, some of it's in road reconstructions. That's, um, like I say, that's a little less than half of the total project list, but it has to, money has to come from somewhere. Sure. We mm -hmm. have gone through a series of rate increases on our water and sewer mm -hmm. rates. And that, ca that catches a portion of it. We were projected by a water rate study and a sewer rate study that we uh, accepted last year. It was proposed that we approximately, we raise our rates approximately twice what we actually did in order to cover all these costs. Well, we didn't do that. It was considered to be too much of a burden on ratepayers. But in a perfect world, your ratepayers would be paying for the services that they receive, including 
maintenance and replacement and capital costs. In our world, sometimes that has to be shared with other sources such as um, the proposed millage we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and there again, we, we go after grants and other help whenever we can get it from state or federal sources. And what are some of those, the millage rate that they would be looking at? Well, we're looking at, um, as we adopted a millage in 2008 of approximately a mill and another millage rate in uh, 2015 of approximately a mill. And as those retire, those were 20 year millages, as those retire, we want to replace those with a permanent millage. And we have some other millages which are going to be retired in the next couple of years. And the intent is to put about a three mil increase in place in the next several years. We'll phase it in so that there's no net increase in millage. It'll be a millage which would not be noticed as additional on your tax bill, but it'd be dedicated only to infrastructure. It would replace other millages as they are retired. Okay. So that will allow us to start accumulating money between that and our sewer and water rate increases so that we can do a go on a pay as you go system. Mm -hmm. When we borrow money to do these big projects and we try to go in and get them all done right away, we have the utility of having them done right away. We have the advantage that they're done behind us, then we have the cost of paying for them over time. That's not a sustainable model. And so the sustainable model is to start building our funds. We can do that with millage, with rates, with um, whatever means we have. But the real point is we want to do these projects as we, as we can afford to without letting them get so far behind that we can never afford to do them. And what are the rates right now, uh, some of the current rates that of the taxes? Well, of the taxes or of the water and sewer rates? The water and sewer rates. Okay, the water and sewer rates that we adopted last year, we're at about, um, there's two components to a water and sewer rate. There's there's a consumptive rate, which on the water side is around five $5.31 per thousand gallons. Mm -hmm. No, that's the sewer rate. The water rate's around, um, well, uh, it's around two and a half dollars per thousand gallons, but there's also a ready to serve charge. And the ready to serve charge is a flat rate applied to each service. The philosophy here is that the consumptive rate, the, the dollars per gallon is what it costs. About a third of that goes into water treatment uh, and sewage treatment. That goes to NOWS and to the uh, sewer authority. Then there's the rest of it is for maintaining the city's system of distributing the water and bringing back the waste to those plants and also the maintenance on all that and um, any debt retirement that we have, any, co any capital costs that we have. So that's the, uh, the consumptive rate is intended to cover the cost of producing and distributing water, but then the flat rate on the, um, on the service is intended to provide, basically it's an access fee. It's helping to maintain the system so if you have access to it based on the size of your service. So even if you have no usage, you're paying something into the system, sure. but you're never paying an extreme amount, other than if you use a really large amount of water, you're paying for what you get. Okay, and all, makes sense. The whole idea here is to have, have people pay for what the service is worth to them. Mm -hmm. And then, as I say, the balance of the cost of these projects that are upcoming is going to be borne by infrastructure millage and the millage is intended to pay for the treatment, water treatment facility? No, it's not. The water treatment facilities are paid for by, uh, those, are, uh, those are joint ventures between us and other municipalities. The water service is North Auto Water System, which is a joint venture between the area municipalities and, mm -hmm. and the Spring Lakes Grand Haven Sewer Authority, again, is a joint regional authority. They're paid for by user fees provided by each municipality. So the more people that you have involved in taking a part of it, the more cost effective it, it, it is for our citizens. Yeah, and we, we're very good in this area about collaborating with other, other communities to run these utilities. But the millage that we want to uh, put in place and the water and, sewer, water and sewer rates that we have in place for these projects that we need to do in order to keep up with all this, they don't pay for the water plant and the sewer plant. The big project that's going on right now is running the line under um, the Grand River to Spring Lake. That's being paid for separately. That's actually being bonded through the county. And so there is a cost to that, but it has nothing to do with these rates we're talking about. So it's important to know that we're not paying for We're not paying Spring through, Lake through, through our first, rates sure. for all these other projects or for the usage of the other municipalities. Great. Okay. Well, good to know. I think it's important that the community understands kind of what the millage is for and what, you know, the benefits that are going to come out of it. Well, it's the kind of thing that you, uh, there, there's no free lunch. Mm -hmm. 
Everything you have has a cost. Sure, and to live in a beautiful and, and area live, like this. To live here, have the services that everybody has come to expect, mm -hmm. because that's what cities do, they provide these services. There's a cost to that, and we're trying to make that as palatable as we can and as fair as we can. Good. All right, well, thank you very much for being on the show. I think we're about out of time. Is there anything else that you need to add to make sure that everybody knows what's going on? No, just stay tuned. We'll be uh, talking more about the upcoming millage proposal, and we'll be talking more about water and sewer rates as we're adopting our budget, and make sure that you contact us if you have questions. Okay, and they can just call City Hall or go to the website. Is there information on the website? There's the proposed budget for um, upcoming rates is posted on the website. Okay. The information about the millage is kind of still being worked out. We've, mm -hmm. we've sent language to the state for a ballot proposal. That will have to be something voted on by the people. We don't get to okay. do this on our own. The people mm -hmm. have to say yes. Okay. And when is the election? It will be in November. November. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching Community Connect. We'll see you next time. Dreaming of buying a home? Your local Lakeshore lending team, Envoy Mortgage, is ready to assist you. Call Casey or William at 616-303-0728. Love your home, love your loan. D. Baker & Son Lumber Company has been connecting with the Tri-Cities since 1871. Our traditions haven't changed in all these years. Quality products, honest pricing, and partnerships with local suppliers is why D. Baker & Son Lumber Company stands the test of time.